Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And today we're going to be talking about the top 5 tips for distro hoppers. You love them, we love them, we all love them in the Linux community. People who just cannot stay on the same distro. They get itchy feet if they're on a distro for a long period of time, so they jump. They just hop from this distro to that distro to this distro to that distro. Some of us are like me. I like learning new types of distros. I like learning what's right and what's not so right with some distros. And some people love my opinions and some people hate them. Um, but that's okay. That's quite okay. The great thing about Linux is we all have choices. Sometimes too many, but that's also okay. So today we're going to talk about the top five types. So I changed the computer that's just out of field right here. I changed the operating system every every you know one week to uh, two or three months, depending on how good or bad the distro is on it. And I actually use that on an external hard drive. Now, um, for those people following the Getting Started with Linux um, series I was doing is, uh, I actually recorded the video, very highly requested video, how to install Linux onto an external hard drive. I recorded it last week, but the audio was bad. The video quality was bad. It was just bad. So I'm going to be re-recording it at a later time. Um, maybe this week we might see that come out. Uh, so if you're wanting to do, know more about that and why that video hasn't come out yet, that's why it's because it was just too bad to release. So I went with a backup video. Um, yeah, uh, last week instead. Uh, but here, as we talk about these, uh, these are tips that I use to move my distros a lot quicker uh, than uh, than they we would otherwise see. So we're going to go ahead and jump on into these top five tips. So uh, buckle your seatbelt, because here we go. Number five. This is kind of one of the ones I didn't know where else to put it, so I just said put it on number five. This is an application to... Uh, to a desktop computer and if you happen to have an empty bay uh, but use a, a consider using an icy dock um, I use this for my main system because um, uh, because it uh, allows me to, to move distributions out pretty quick of course I need to get a replacement for this one this one was uh, was killed in the computer meltdown and uh, uh, I just, it's been lower priority getting it fixed, so they really need to. So an IC dock fits into a CD tray on a computer, so hopefully you have one of those. And there's a variety of different sizes. This one is compatible with both your uh, two and a half inch drives or your three and a half inch drives. So what this allows you is uh, you'll have on the back, you have a power input, and then you have uh, two SATA inputs over here. And so what this will allow us to do is to have one device there and I have a power button on the top for each one of the drives so I can have the drive in here or not in here and then I can just pop it out keep the drive around if you like that distro keep it around maybe label it put it in a drawer or whatever else and you can just kind of pop it in a lot easier it gives you a full on uh, a full on Linux distro or whatever distro also great if you're a gamer to have one of these so you can have one of your hard drives as your Windows install for your games and then for everything else, you pop that guy out, put in your new hard drive, and uh, now you have that. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put a link to uh, this in the uh, description down below. Uh, but these guys here, you can actually pick up uh, on Amazon. This one's I thought that I thought it was a lot cheaper than that. I thought I remember paying thirty or forty, but it says sixty now. So. I don't know. Um, IC Dock is, uh, I think this is the specific brand. Um, just anything that would allow you to swap your hard drives. IC Dock, I think, is the most respectable brand. And this is actually this particular model. Uh, so that is your uh, number five tip. Consider using an IC Dock. Number four, build yourself a NAS. Get yourself a good network with a good NAS on it so that you can kind of keep files back and forth a whole lot easier. This has so many applications. Um, I don't have to move any uh, any media around. Um, all of my music is centralized on there. Any of the videos I've downloaded that I like are centralized on there. You know, so I have some favorite YouTube videos, whatever else. Um, and uh, sermons. I have a lot of video sermons that uh, I have copies of on there. So a lot of different stuff you can put on there. You can put in your media, you can put your music, you can put your pictures on there uh, as well. Also though, what you want to use this for primarily, and we'll get into this in our next step, is to you want to keep a copy of your your most critical home folder application so you don't have to keep resetting your settings. That's one of the biggest things about you know a Windows 
uh, install. Install Windows, you got to get everything installed, then reconfigure everything. Well, Linux allows you to port that with the files that are inside of your home directory. So we'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, now, what I recommend is Open Media Vault. Uh, there's uh, Free NAS is another one as well. I went with Open Media Vault because it is a Debian-based system. So if something goes goofy with it, I should be able to fix it a whole lot easier than if I'm you know, stuck on some other system. Uh, so Open Media Vault is uh, quite awesome. Uh, I built this thing once almost two years ago and it just it's just a powerhouse. I built this on a uh, just on a small micro tower PC. Um, it has it has uh, two hard drives in it. I put two laptop hard drives in there. They create a RAID that is a duplicate of each other. I always get that wrong. It's either a RAID 0 or RAID 1. Whatever it is that makes a duplicate of the drives. And then I have it configured so when I plug a USB drive into the front of it, it will sync up all those copies also onto that external USB drive. So I always have a very quick off-site backup. Of course, if you want to know how to do this, I built a video. I have a couple videos on this. Uh, but I built a video called the Open Media Vault Setup and Configuration, which will help you build one of these systems. So you can go ahead and build one of these. This is one of the most critical things that allows you to distro hop a whole lot faster. So great thing to, to work out on. So uh, go ahead and consider building yourself a NAS as our number four. Number three, consider a mobile home. This is a very critical item because uh, in Linux, all of your different settings and configurations is stored within your home folder. And so what I did is I created a system that I simply call the mobile home. Now, if you're going to build the NAS, put it on your NAS. If you're not going to build a NAS, get yourself a little USB drive so you can keep a copy of your home folder, all your critical files on this, which you can e easily keep on adding to if you need to, replacing things, whatever else. All right, so uh, in Linux, if you are looking at your um, uh, looking at your home folder, now you might uh, you might uh, be have to find your um, uh, your hidden folders. So uh, on Ubuntu or many distros, holding Control and hitting H will show your hidden files. I think KDE, it's either Alt period or Control period. I can't remember. Uh, or in your various file managers and in, uh, in um, Nautilus here, you just kind of pull this down, click show hidden folders down there. Now inside of here, you will find these various items. So Mozilla, this is actually the system configurations, all the extensions and everything else for Firefox. Um, I really don't have anything else on this to, to really show you what it is. But if this system is working perfectly, you can take this, uh, everything in this home folder and move it onto a USB drive, on your NAS, whatever else. And then what happens is you can pull up those files and transfer them to your new distro. So what I actually have here, this is my mobile home for my Debian computer. I actually have a couple of these. Uh, what I keep in here is Thunderbird here. Uh, this actually stores inside of it all of my email accounts. So all I have to do when I transfer this over, drop this on any computer that has Fire, uh, excuse me, uh, Thunderbird installed, and I do not have to reconfigure my emails, which is good because I have about 20, 25 email accounts that get checked. So this guy here, I can drop this guy in and it will automatically get uh, Thunderbird working. Um, I also have, uh, uh, there's also one for evolution, which will do the same for evolution, except on evolution, you also need to re-enter the password. Uh, Cody will keep track of all my logs and things. It keeps that, that rolling track of which have I watched, what have I not watched, whatever else. And then inside config, this is just another evolution one. Those are really the only settings that I need to move. Mostly it's evolution and Thunderbird because those take a lot of time to reconfigure your emails. And then I have my password protected uh, password list for my emails because in evolution you, you do need to re-enter your uh, passwords on all your emails. Thunderbird you don't, so that might be a security bug somewhere in Thunderbird. I don't know for sure. And of course, I have all my uh, various other uh, various other things inside of here. So uh, you can actually kind of spot what we have. There's my cats and tinfoil hats picture. I actually have a coffee mug with this on it. <laughs> Shop.switchlinux.com. So um, the mobile home, though, will allow you to take all of your settings, configurations, and files, whatever else you need from your uh, old distro, from the distro you're hopping from, 
throw it onto an intermediary, drop this right on your new distro, and everything is set to go once, of course, you get the software installed. So that is my number three. Go ahead and keep yourself a good mobile home because it's really going to help you with configuring some of the things. And you put in there anything. Whatever application you're using, it will keep a configuration file in that home directory. All you need to do is port that over, have the same application installed, and you should be set to go with minimal headaches. Number two tip. You want to keep some good uh, USB drives around. I keep a lot of these ones here. These are um, uh, six, I think this is 32 gigabytes actually. Um, I have 128 guys here. You want to keep a lot of different USB drives, uh, flash drives, maybe even hard drives around depending on how you're, you're hopping back and forth to distros. Because there are distros that I've had that I really wished I would have kept. Uh, my Manjaro Budgie build for example i absolutely love that thing it was so totally awesome i wish i would have saved it but unfortunately i didn't um but anyway uh keeping a lot of these drives around means that you will if you have built a system you really like the system and you don't want to make a backup of it you can always drop it into another computer and make an iso image backup of it that's another option um, but I do like keeping a lot of these around because then i can decide where do i want to install this at um, it's just good and handy to have all those out. Of course, if you don't have your NAS, you want to get yourself a dedicated one for your mobile home, then you just keep that one drive around as your mobile home. Pop that guy right in, transfer the things over, and you're good to go with not only your files, but your uh, application configurations as well. So that's actually a very important thing to remember is uh, keep those USB drives on hand. Now, before we get into our number one, um, if you want to help support this channel, you can check out the links in the description down below. My main uh, support information can be uh, found on switchtolinux.com forward slash support. Uh, I also do have another, um, another support page called thinklifemedia.com, which actually ties in all three of my channels in one, one location. I am on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. That's T-O-M-M if you are interested in that. And uh, like I said, that uh, I do have a... Uh, a coffee cup with a cats and tinfoil hats of other things including a nice switch to linux mouse pad and a bunch of other stuff at shop.switchtolinux.com and our number one tip for distro hoppers learn to use bash scripts these are your friends any types of configuration files any types of adjustments you need to do do you need to build an af stab into your system so that it automatically mounts your nas drive directly to it you can do that uh, do you want to install the applications that you need to use? You can do that. So how does a bash script work? Well, I mean, this is a, a this is the simplest they come. All a script is is just any file with text in it that you run through bash. So what I have here is I have uh, created this one here, which simply has our command apt install. I hit dash y so it answers yes. So I don't have to sit there and keep hitting yes on things. Um, and then I've just thrown the applications I want to install. Here's Kodi, Evolution, VLC, Thunderbird, Chromium, LibreOffice, GIMP. Now, of course, if one of these applications is not in the repos, you're going to need to go through and, and fight with it. You should get, uh, if you're following along on the screen, you'll be able to spot that. Um, but it's going to install everything that it finds in this script. Why does it not have sudo in front of it? Because we run the script itself as sudo. Um, so however you're you're going to do that. So I'm going to hold control alt and push T to bring us into a terminal in Ubuntu Of course before we get there, let's just verify uh, Thunderbird should not be on here uh, Cody is not on here uh, LibreOffice is not on here because this is the minimal install for um, for Ubuntu um, What else is on there? I think evolution which is not on there and chromium which is not on there All right, so now that we have seen that none of these applications are installed, we're going to go back here. We're going to go to our desktop. If I can remember how to get to the desktop. <laughs> Yeesh, I can't type today. There we are. Now we're at the desktop. Um, people, people rip on me when I type in DIR. I apologize, man. I'm a recovering Windows user. So LS will also give us the directory. All right. So uh, the script is called install. And what we're going to do is just do sudo bash install. It's going to ask us for a password one time. And then it's going to sit there and should run. Uh, except uh, it does have a problem. You do need to make sure you have the proper packages in there. Um... Let's get rid of Chromium. I forgot what it was for the Chromium browser, I guess. 
<sighs> I tested the script and then I added a bunch of other stuff to it. <laughs> That's fun. All right, let's try that again. There it goes. Now it's gonna go. Now it's gonna update everything uh, all at once. Uh, well, it does that. I should uh, double check what is the script for Chromium. I thought it was Chromium. All right, and we're back. I did verify it is Chromium dash browser. For some reason, I forgot the dash browser part. Uh, so what I did is I just reran the script again with just the Chromium browser. Everything else is already installed, so no big deal. And then now that we come up here, we can see Chromium is installed. Now Kodi is installed. Uh, we did GIMP in that. We did VLC. We did Thunderbird. And we did Evolution. I think those are all the applications we'd installed in that. So that way, a Bash script. Now, like I said, the Bash script can be used for more than just uh, can be used for more than just installing applications. It can be used for any function that you need to do. Simply build all the commands into here, one line at a time. Build all the commands into here. Uh, you can annotate it with uh, with comments out so that you can keep this. And then you can actually put this in your mobile home folder. You can dump all your files on on the mobile home folder. And then what you can do is. Um, once you dump all those files in the mobile home folder, uh, then it's going to um, it's going to uh, you can run the script and then you'll be able to open up the applications and have uh, have all of the uh, everything working correctly. So that's how you can use a Bash script uh, with uh, to enable you to install your software a whole lot better when you are switching over to a different distro. So those were my top five tips for distro hoppers. Let me know your tips in the comments down below. And thank you for watching the video and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.